Well, thanks for taking us on a spin around your garden on your Garden Railroad. Right now we're going to be talking about one of the hottest new plants for Central Texas. Not necessarily a new plant, but one that has certainly caught fire. It's the abutilons. And I'm joined by May Sanchez from Barton Springs Nursery, who is a, a Butylon fan. Yes, <laughs> I have my vote. <laughs> Great to have you back to Central thanks, Texas thanks Gardener. Me. Now, these, this plant family are sometimes called blooming maples. Flowering maple, right. Chinese lanterns, Chinese bell lanterns. flower, right. Indian mallow. Yeah, and, and I want to, I'm going to pull one out <laughs> so we can start talking about, show people what we're talking about right away, and then we'll kind of talk about how to take care sure. of these guys and show a variety of different ones. Now, this, this is just a little baby, of course. Right. Uh, and this uh, a beautiful red bloom on it, and you can see that this has got to be related to the hibiscus family. Mm -hmm. It's in the mallow family, right? Uh, which of course the hibiscus are included in as well. I brought yeah. this small one just because it has a bloom on it. Right. Um, ultimately, that plant can get a couple of feet tall, two to three feet tall. It's relatively compact for abutilons. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you can see kind of that one's actually pretty open for an abutilon. Generally, right. you'll see them more closed and bell shaped, but you can kind of see how it's hanging upside down like right. that. Right. Right. Hence the Chinese lantern. It yeah, has that Chinese kind of lantern-like lantern right. look when they're hanging down side like mm -hmm. that. Kind of like our native Turks cap, the way that they hang down. Yeah, exactly, and closed and, up. And I love the papery quality of the right, bloom. Right, that's kind of lantern-like as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. So this is this is uh, what the bloom looks like. There, there are a whole range of different colors. Mm -hmm. Now, we have um, a more mature uh, version of the same uh, variety over here. Uh -huh. And uh, this one is nice and full and kind of has It's pretty a compact for abutilons. Right. Um, you know, they range anywhere in size from a foot tall to eight to ten feet tall. If so they can get really rangy. They can get tall fast, some varieties. Mm -hmm. um, this particular one, you saw them, you know, year, ten years ago or so we were talking mm -hmm. about they were grown primarily as indoor plants is how people knew yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember when I first saw them, I thought how beautiful Surely they will not grow in the ground here. I'll keep it in a container, and it lasted for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I can keep them in a in a greenhouse or even in bright mm -hmm. light inside, just mm -hmm. fine. Uh, and then I guess as we became to started to get more and more mild, our winters did, yeah. and people just tried to ex started experimenting more. We realized we can put these in the ground, no problem. Mm -hmm. Most some of them are hardier than others. And even this past winter, they came through. Yeah, there's some varieties that you know took a some burning on their leaves, but otherwise. Pretty much semi evergreen in a 10 okay. to 15 degree winter is pretty okay. impressive. So you said they range from two to feet to, up to eight feet. To eight feet, yep, uh, and everywhere in between. There's some that stay three to four mm -hmm. feet. Some will get. Now, just looking at these plants, I would say morning sun, afternoon shade, something like that. Morning sun, they prefer, and I guess having grown indoors, that might be a testament to mm -hmm. how little light they can take. But they're really, if you're going to give them half a day, make it the morning sun and mm -hmm. afternoon sun. They can grow, but they'll wilt, that they'll look thirsty. They might not necessarily be thirsty, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of like stressing out from too much sun. Okay, so shade is an important factor. Shade, dappled sun, which is also mm -hmm. kind of appealing because you can at least, it's one of the few plants that gives you decent color for the shade. Okay, okay. What are the soil conditions? <laughs> I would, again, when I think of mallows and hibiscus, I think good, rich garden soil and moisture. Uh, yeah, they don't, they're, they're tolerant of drought. I mean, they'll, uh -huh. for, they'll forgive you if you forget to water them. Okay, you know, that's they, good. Uh, but soil-wise, neutral alkalinity mm -hmm. or neutral at pH. They don't need to be necessarily acidic or alkaline. Right. Um, definitely add compost. I wouldn't dig a hole in Clay West G. Austin, <laughs> yeah, and stick it in the ground. You need to amend the soil for them. They, right. they'll, the better the soil, the better they'll do. Uh-huh. Um, and water, you know, the, if it drains well, they can be watered regularly. Okay. Um, there's actually a native abutilon and South Texas native that wants really well-drained sandy soil. I couldn't right. get my hands on one to show you, but yeah. it, it kind of has that velvety. I think I've seen velvety, pictures of it. You're very velvety looking. Hypoleucum. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, um, because these plants can get kind of rangy, mm -hmm. a lot of people might prefer to keep them a little bit shaped up or pruned. What's the appropriate time to prune these? Oh, you could prune them. They they kind of continuously bloom throughout the year. They have like this okay. cycle that just they just keep on going with anywhere from like two to four weeks where they're not blooming. Um, and you can prune them. There's not. They're kind of between rounds right now. Like you know, mm -hmm. midsummer is a good time when they're not. You know, between rounds of bloom, you can mm -hmm. prune them. They have a real random stem growth, I think. You yeah. Know, you can't really. 
I don't know, I'm sure there's a, the, a correct term for the way their stems are, right. but you can't really just take head shears and shear them, you no, kind of you print selectively. You do it artfully, uh -huh. okay, bit by bit. Okay, now yeah. let's show some other varieties, and I, I don't know if you, we know the name of this one, it's a, a, a nice Call white alba form. Flora. Alpha Flora? Alba. Alba Flora, of course. And uh, this one is a little, probably a little more typical in terms of the bloom form, you right. think? Right, more closed, hanging upside down. They Glowing almost white. always will have different color yeah. calyx as, as well. Yeah, really lovely uh, white color that would certainly look cool in a summer garden. Yeah, and in the shade too, it'll brighten it up. Oh, absolutely. And these can get covered in blooms. I mean, yeah. hundreds of blooms on a mature plant. That's awesome. That just kind of hang like ornaments upside uh, I down. I love the sound of that. I mean, a, a really great show. Yeah. Now there's some other name varieties we want to highlight. Mm -hmm. One is called Marilyn, and um, I, we don't have one here, I don't believe, but we have an image of it. Tell me about this variety. Marilyn's Choice, um, it's kind of sprawling. You do need to give them space if you're, okay. you know, other than the more compact forms, you'll, you'll want to give them three to four feet wide at okay. least. Um, and Marilyn's Choice is kind of an angular one. It has a beautiful, uh, like dark red calyx with a yellow with yellow petals, mm -hmm. um, which is a really nice contrast. Yeah, sounds great. Um, and also super hardy. That one was evergreen this winter for mm. us at the nursery. You know, 15 Fantastic. degrees or so. Yeah, 15 degrees in evergreen. Yeah. Wow, I'm, that's and, impressive. Yeah, we don't baby it at all. It's minimal cool. water. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> Survival of the fittest. So Marilyn is a, a beautiful yellow form. Uh, uh -huh. There's a pink form that's real common, and pink, I don't know. You don't I don't know, know what the name of this one is but we have a beautiful pink I flower think it's just show. a hybrid pink yeah, yeah. Um, it's got pink with like dark pink veins in it so another nice contrast um, and that's one of the taller ones it's mm -hmm. also really woody I mean that one gets almost small tree form they can get like up eight that. feet ten feet mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll say is I, I haven't noticed the beetle wants to be you know five to seven years is an expected life Term, okay. you know, they, they're not long lived perennials. So it's but not like a shrub that enough. you're going to plant and have there in, for generations. Yeah, but that's well, that's, okay. yeah, so far that's my observation. Yeah. Is that after about five to six years, they'll just kind of die. Um, there's another no. s striking form that we have an image of, and it's called that y'all, I think, at Barton Springs Nursery have uh, uh, dubbed it pa Patrick's a beetle. Line. Right, Patrick Kerwin, the designer. Uh, Brought mm -hmm. that to us from cuttings. It's a, a butylon pictum, mm -hmm. and that is e definitely one of the most striking flowers you'll ever see with the bright orange blooms with these deep red veins running through it and yeah. purple anther in there. It's really unbelievable. And the light, the, uh, you know, like we talked about earlier with the paper yeah. petals, the light kind of shines through them. And yeah, there's them. kind of a glowing quality mm -hmm. to that that's really special, I think. And yeah. I noticed it just looking at the one that I held up a short while ago. Now, the leaf form is uh, striking as well. Mm -hmm. and we have a couple of specimens over here. We have we can get a closer look at the leaves. And this is where that name uh, blooming or flowering maple comes in, because right. these are very maple-like uh -huh, uh, looking leaves. Very attractive foliage, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think. They do vary a little bit, just mm -hmm. in, I mean, you could see some with the more heart-shaped and some right. have more lobes than others. Right. Uh, Patrick's has a glossier leaf to it. It has uh -huh. a, it's, you know. Just like a lot of the hibiscus, you get some that are soft looking yeah. and others that are very shiny, shiny and slick. Yeah. Right, yeah. So that one had a very star-like shape, very pronounced, and the next one has more of the palm shape. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, and you know, I guess you can make the argument that the broader leafed ones can tolerate more shade, maybe, mm -hmm. or the smaller leafed ones more sun. Yeah, never, that's tends to be a, a sign. It's a general that, rule, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. So you, there are a lot of cool varieties there. Now, there's a, before we depart entirely, we've been talking about abutilons throughout here. But there's a related plant that you brought one in that's blooming right now, and we just have a, just enough time to show this off because for folks who like this plant family, this is added enticement. This is a mallow. Yeah, I mean, you can't resist the bloom. Yeah, these are mallows. The, the yellow is a hibiscus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called lemon rose mallow, yeah. and it's just now starting, and it'll go all summer in the shade. Yeah, well, the, the yellow mallow is stunning. And May, thank you so much for sure, coming yeah, on. Uh, hopefully, we've piqued people's curiosities about yep. these beautiful plants. I think you'll probably have a run on them at Barton Springs. All right, Springs we got them. <laughs> okay. Plenty. All right, thanks so much for being here. Uh, thank you. All right, and coming up next is Daphne Richards.